Hey, Erin James here. I wanted to show you how to make your own uh, fiber blending board if you don't feel like spending the, uh, I believe they're usually like $175 for a fiber blending board. But uh, fiber blending boards are great if you are a spinner or a felter and you want to get, you like the idea of, uh, you know, maybe getting a drum carter and making your own art bats, but you don't want to spend that much money to start with you can get a blending board. And uh, when I was looking, <laughs> and then I was like, man, these things are like $175, and then you gotta ship them. Uh, I don't know, th those were the ones I was seeing. Maybe you can find them cheaper. But, um, you know, I was like, uh, I can make that. So anyhow, I just, in case anybody else was in that boat, uh, I was gonna show you how I made mine. And granted, it's not the prettiest thing ever, but it worked really good, and then I'll show you how to make a little art bat. So, this <laughs> is my, <laughs> A homemade blending board. So what I did, and oh yeah, it has sticks that go with it. What I did was I did order the, uh, it's drum carter cloth, and you can get that from, I got mine from paradisefibers.com, and you can order it, it's by the inch. I think mine was 12 inches, I haven't measured it recently. But, um, so I did order this, and it's not super cheap, uh, but it is way cheaper than a blending board. So get yourself, you can get different, uh, lengths or types uh, of the little needles. I think I just got a good all-purpose one for art bats. And like I said, a Paradise Fibers website has a lot of really good info on that. So check that out. That's where I got mine. And then I actually ended up, because I was going to go to like the hardware store and get somebody like, custom cut me a piece of wood. And then that seemed like, I don't know, I couldn't find anybody there that would help me. And, uh, it seemed very expensive, so I actually ended up these things. I bought, there's two of them, are what you would buy, and um, they're already, you know, beveled and look all cute. Um, like to put, you would put your house numbers on them. <laughs> so you would just have one, so you'd put like your house numbers on it, and then I guess hang them by your front door. So I bought two of these things, they were at Ace, they were I believe $8 a piece. And uh, I had originally planned on putting like, a board or a strap or something in the back to, you know, make it so they don't hinge. But I've actually decided I like it this way because uh, it's, you know, it's easier to store. So, I don't know. I may eventually do that, but uh, I may eventually not. So, anyhow, that's the general idea. And then I just took the, you know, industrial, like, wood staples that uh, we had on our tool bench in the garage and just stapled it down. So, that's, uh, that's how I made the blending board. And then this, these, you also need the dowels to go with it, are just regular old dowels from the hardware store. So they're, you know, yay big, about the size of my pinky. So anyhow, that's what I got. So now I'll show you how to make some roll eggs on your, so, you know, I'm trying to think how much money I have. So to lay the fiber on, you get it going the opposite direction of the little pins. And I just sort of paint it on like this. You can just kind of layer it in any way you want. That's the fun part. And different fibers are kind of grabby different ways. So always just make sure you pull it along, you know, the opposite direction of the pegs so that they're catching it. You can add sparkly stuff or whatever you want that way. I'm just going to do one here real quick. You can take, I've just got a, from the pet store, dog brush, but you can use an official one if you want to just kind of get the fibers down in the pins a little bit more if you want. Let's see if I can grab a little bit more here with the Angelica in it. And you don't want it to be too thick. You want to be able to still see the pins showing through it or else you'll end up with a really that weird roll leg. And then to get it off, you want to leave this kind of fringe on the bottom. You feed one peg through your dowels and then you sandwich it in the middle. And I always do one fold over first to kind of lock it in there. And then what you're doing is you're kind of pulling it this way against the pins and rolling. You're pulling and rolling. And that really helps to smooth it so you can pick the whole thing up, smooth it all out, make it pretty looking. 
I always afterwards, because you'll end up with it kind of that way, like gently roll my hand and roll it that way. And the fibers kind of draft onto each other. And uh, you can straighten it out a little bit. And that'll help lock it in the shape more. And then to get it off, don't just try to like do it that way or it will all fall apart on you. Pull one out first. And you've got just, it looks like a shish kebab. And then pull the other one off that way. And then it's pretty solid after that. So you can store it either flat or uh, you can store them rolled that way. And then when you're spinning, you just start at this end and then you can do long pull draft for woolen spinning off the side and it just pulls all the fiber out from in the middle. 